$3,000 for a dog. Man, you know, a while ago I did a video all about comparing the differences between my $3,000 Doberman Arlo, who was purchased from a very reputable breeder, to my $600 Doberman uh, Cooper, who was purchased from what a lot of people would call a backyard breeder. And that video got over a thousand different comments, a lot of them questions, and a lot of people really wanting to ask, you know, what's really the good and the bad of owning each of these dogs? You know, not just comparing them point for point, but the good and the bad of real daily life with them. So today we're going to focus on the $3,000 Doberman, my higher end Doberman Arlo, who came from a very reputable breeder. And you know, I love Arlo to death, but it's not all sunshine and roses, people. Just because you pay a lot, it doesn't mean you get the world. You definitely need to check this out. Okay, so let's jump straight in and learn more about my high-end Doberman, my $3,000 Doberman I got from a very reputable breeder. And I'm gonna try to be as unbiased as possible here, guys, even with some of the negative qualities of Arlo. So let's jump straight in. Okay, now Arlo was purchased in 2020, this is pre-pandemic, for $3,000. So nowadays, he'd probably be quite a bit more than that. And he was bought from a very reputable breeder who was apparently very selective about which dogs he, you know, paired together to mate to make his puppies. And that's something you should expect from a high-end breeder. Uh, but just so you know, Arlo is a black and rust male Doberman. He's 100% European bloodline. Okay, so let's jump straight into first off the good about Arlo. Now the first good thing of my higher end $3,000 Doberman is he has a very well documented lineage. Definitely got all the paperwork. I can see many generations back. I can see fathers, grandfathers, so on, all the way back titles and awards that they got going pretty far back, which is certainly a nice thing to have. And it should be expected when you go to a higher end breeder. Now, the next good thing about my high end Doberman was he came with his ears already cropped. This is pretty normal for uh, breeders here in the United States anyway, outside the country, not as much. But here in the US, many high end breeders send all their dogs home with ears already cropped, not all of them. And you can certainly request not to have your dog's ears cropped, but by default, most of them do crop the ears because that's a breed standard here in the US. And if you're planning to get the ears cropped anyway, it's nice to have it already done when you pick up the puppy. You're not spending that seven, $800 to go to a reputable vet and get the ears done right after you get your puppy. Another good thing about Arlo is he's a very high drive dog. Now, some of these things I'm telling you can be good or bad depending on the environment they go home to, right? In my case, I definitely do appreciate that Arlo has no problem keeping up with any outdoor adventures that I do or any other outside outings. He just loves to keep pushing forward and he keeps going. Now, of course, that can be a downside depending on what environment he's in, but we'll talk about that in a minute and some of the energy issues that go along with that in the bad section. Arlo is also a very intelligent dog, just like you'd expect from a Doberman. So that is certainly a positive for him. He can problem solve, he can work things out. Now, sometimes, of course, just like any Doberman, he puts that problem solving ability to bed and not always to good, right? Like if he has a stubborn streak, for example, but, um, but he can be intelligent when he wants to be. And that's certainly a good thing. Now, another positive about Arlo is he's great with kids. Now he's very gentle around them. He's cautious around them. Certainly how cautious a Doberman is around kids has a lot to do with how they're raised and not so much genetics. But I will say that this dog coming from a high-end breeder must have had some good genetics in that department anyway, uh, because he certainly is cautious around children and I have no qualms about having this dog around my children. Now this dog is also a very confident dog and it is nice to have a confident dog, so I'm putting it in the positive category. There can be the occasional downsides if it gets to be too much, right? Like it could be an overconfidence, over dominant thing, or off leash, for example, if you have an extremely confident dog off leash, it can be bad because they can tend to have a higher chance of wandering than a dog that needs to check in with you a little more often. So there can be a downside to it, but in general, confidence in a, Do in a Doberman when it's in check is usually a very good thing. So it's going in the good column. Now being a high-end dog, he was also tested for health issues 
by the breeder. A lot more than a lot of, say, uh, cheaper or backyard dogs are. He had the DCM test, the dilated cardiomyopathy test, which is that heart issue that's really getting the door and breed lately, at least testing for his risk factors anyway. Um, and he also had a test for von Wildebrand's disease or VWD. That's that bleeding and blood clotting disorder that Dobermans sometimes suffer from. And I believe he had a hip exam as well and maybe some others. It's, it's been a while now, but he definitely had a lot more documented health tests uh, than my more inexpensive Doberman for sure. Okay guys, so now some of the surprising stuff. This is some of the bad or we'll say kind of ugly or maybe less than ideal things about my higher end Doberman, the $3,000 Doberman. And the first one is, yes, he was expensive. He was $3,000 in pre-pandemic dollars. So nowadays, pff, I don't know, he'd be a lot more than that though probably. And that's a lot of money to dish out in the very beginning before you even get any supplies for the dog, before you get your first vet checkup with the first vaccines, before you get any of that stuff, you're already shelling out $3,000. That certainly is a downside in my book. The next downside to my high-end Doberman is he has lots and lots of energy. Now, I mentioned in my previous section how he has high drive and how that can be a good thing we're out on adventures, right? But having tons of energy all day long can be difficult in certain environments, in certain households, if you're not able to keep up with them. Uh, certainly, Arlo, for me, uh, if I have a particularly busy week at work, for example, I can certainly see his anxiety start to raise. And if your dog has a high exercise requirement like that, uh, it's definitely a higher chance to have some anxiety issues with that dog simply because it's more difficult on a daily, weekly basis to get them the exercise that they need. Now, the next downside to my expensive Doberman is he's a bit reckless. He tends to charge through things a little bit more without thinking them through. He has fun and he goes a little bit crazy and does all that fun, playful stuff, but he's definitely a little bit less cautious than, let's say, my inexpensive Doberman uh, was. But he, uh, he certainly means well, uh, but he definitely has a little bit of a reckless streak. Now, my high-end dog is also a bit more dominant as well, and that can definitely be a bad thing. Uh, he definitely tends to push boundaries a little bit more. He's a little more headstrong. Uh, now, it could be a good or a bad thing depending on the environment, but um, this does lead to a very difficult like first year of life when they hit that stubborn stage and they're pushing those boundaries. Just being a more dominant dog in general really means you as a trainer need to be a lot more on point and it's a lot harder for say a first time Doberman owner to handle a dominant Doberman than it is for an experienced one. So that can be a downside very often depending on what family this type of dog goes into. Now the next downside is that this dog has two of the genetic markers for DCM. Now that's that heart condition that I told you about that really affects the Doberman breed. And this is only some of his risk factors for it, but I didn't know this until I tested it myself that he has two of the mutated genes that contribute to a higher chance of this health issue. Certainly a downside in my book. One interesting thing about his genetic markers for that, guys, is I saw the health testing paperwork for his parents, and the results that they got for their DCM test do not match at all with what his results were, and makes it genetically impossible for those two dogs to be his parents. It was a big mystery, and I actually did a whole video about testing him where I kind of unveiled this mystery, and uh, that video should be popping up right there in the corner of your screen if you want to check out more about that, because that was certainly a little bit surprising to say the least. Now, another downside to Arlo is he has a 48% COI number, or coefficient of inbreeding. Now, stay with me for one second. Basically, this just means how inbred he is. It's a number to rate how inbred. Every purebred dog is inbred to some extent, Dobermans are inbred more than many other purebreds, unfortunately, and Arlo specifically, my high-end Doberman, is more inbred than even the average Doberman by a decent amount. Now, this is a very important thing to know because this can affect things like his longevity, his chances of getting serious diseases in life, and that is certainly a downside in my book, too. In fact, let me show you his inbred levels and how high it is. Let me show this graph, and I'll put it up on your screen. Uh, if you look at this graph to the left is the lower COI numbers, that's less inbred. To the right, that's more inbred. And that uh, line, that solid line, that's where other purebreds are usually. But the bar lines, that's where Dobermans tend to test. And if you look at Arlo, he's at 48%, which is definitely on the upper end of that, uh, which is very good to know. Uh, unfortunately, this means that things like his longevity might be affected. Statistically, anyway, it will be affected. Uh, and it's just not a good sign for Arlo. But honestly, I would have never known this if I didn't test it myself, so I'm really glad I did, and I pass this information straight to his vet. Guys, I'm so glad I got Arlo tested. I really am, and I'm a big advocate of that. That's why I do mention it on my channel a lot. I do, because I really believe in it. Um, it can quite literally give you more time with your dog and prolong their life. It can give you more days together 
with your dog. That's huge. That's priceless. And just by making you aware of what's going on under the hood with their health and their DNA health, and you can test your dog literally at any age and then forward those results onto your vet and develop a plan from there. Both the fact that Arlo is more inbred than the average dog and the fact that he has those two genetic markers uh, for DCM are two things that I would have never known if I just relied solely on the health testing that the breeder gave me. So I'm so glad I tested it myself. Also, since the test kit I used tested for over 230 different health conditions and disorders in the DNA, uh, it really did provide me with a lot of peace of mind because there's a lot that Arlo was clear of uh, and I just didn't need to worry about. In fact, if you do test your dog, take a look at the Doran Planet DNA testing guide. It should really help you out once you get all your results to really see which of those health tests, those 230 health tests, you should really care about and really focus in on for the Doran breed specifically. That guide will be linked to in the description down below. So if you test your dog, definitely check that out to get the most possible out of your test results. Now, if you want to pick up one of these health test kits from Embark, I strongly suggest you do. A link to them will be down in the description down below. Uh, Doberman Planet is an affiliate for Embark, and, but because of our relationship, I was able to get you guys a really kind of a big fat coupon code, which is awesome, like a really large one, which helps a lot with the cost of these kits. Um, and that coupon code will be down in the description also. Uh, and once you get your results, that guide that will help you interpret them in a way that is most important for a Doberman owner to look at these results, that'll be in the description below. So everything you need is down below. A link to the kits, the coupon code that'll save you a chunk of money, and that testing guide at DobermanPlanet.com that helps you interpret them in a way that is important to a Doberman owner. Thank you guys so much for watching today. This has been a deep dive into my personal experience anyway, owning a higher end Doberman named Arlo. And I do have a video coming out very soon where I do the same deep dive into kind of my budget Doberman, my $600 Doberman uh, Cooper. And you may be surprised actually about what daily life was like with Cooper as well. So when that video comes out, that'll be linked to in the description also. And it'll be coming out pretty soon, depending on when you watch this, might be linked down there. I'm gonna put it there as soon as it's released. Uh, but thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button before you go anywhere and the bell icon next to it that makes sure that you don't miss any way anything that i release it gives you a little boop, boop, a little notification right on your phone or your computer or whatever make sure you don't miss anything hit that bell icon and the like button before you take off if you found anything useful appreciate hanging out with me guys what do you think same time on sunday next week okay i'll see you then